Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph uh, this rational function. And to do that, what we're going to do is just kind of follow some certain steps. Um, the first thing we want to do is identify the vertical asymptotes. Because if we can identify the vertical asymptotes, then we can test to make sure they're asymptotes uh, compared to being just holes of the graph. So to do that, uh, what we're simply going to do is take our denominator and set it equal to 0. Again, the reason why we take our denominator, set it equal to 0, because the values that make that equation true, that make that, denom that, make that function 0, well, that means our denominator is 0, meaning our function will be undefined for those values. So I just simply take x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. Um, when I go to solve, I look at this and I say, I can't solve using inverse operations. I have to apply uh, factoring and then use the zero product property. So I look into factoring this. What two numbers, uh, since I have just an x squared, I can look at this and say, what two numbers multiply to give me negative 6? Add to give me negative 1, and I can factor that to x minus 3 times x plus 2. If you don't believe me or you don't know how I got that, um, obviously I have factoring videos, but you can also just apply FOIL uh, to double check your work. Then I apply zero product property, set them both equal to 0. And therefore I can say x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. So now that I have x equals 3 and x equals negative 2, now I have um, two asymptotes. And what I want to do is identify and see, all right, well, are any of those actually holes in the equation? And to do that, what I simply can do is write the product of factors, which is right here, in replacement of my function. So it'd be x minus 3 times x plus 2. And since I cannot divide any of these factors out, therefore, these are not going to be holes. These are asymptotes. So to graph that. So to graph that, all I'm going to do is now graph these values, because these are where my, my denominator is 0, so therefore that's where my function is undefined. So I go to negative 2, 1, 2, and I draw a nice last sum. Then I go to positive 3, 1, 2, 3, and I draw a nice last sum. The next thing I want to do is now identify the horizontal asymptote. So identifying the horizontal asymptote, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the degrees of our functions in the numerator and the denominator. And what I notice in my degrees, when I look at these two, is you could say that first thing, whenever we're comparing degrees, we've got to make sure, first of all, that it's in descending order, right? That we have the largest degree first going down. Now, we usually don't write them, but you can see here it's x squared, x to the 1, x to the 0, right? We don't really usually write those, the x and raised to x1, but it's important for us to help when we're trying to compare degrees to know that just the variable x is really x to the first power. Um, so they're both in descending order. Now I can identify, compare them and say, all right, so I have x to the 1 and compared to x to the 2. Well, obviously, x to the 1 is smaller than x squared, right? So when comparing degrees, what we need to look at is use this format. It says f of x equals a of x over b of x. So what this says is if the degree of your function in the numerator, a of x, is less than the degree in the function in our denominator, b of x, then our horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. So I can just say y equals 0. So now I just graph a graph over here. Now the last thing I want to do is to identify what this graph looks like. I would highly recommend using graphing technology, your graphing calculator or a computer. Um, but basically what we're going to be looking into doing is choosing two values. Choosing two values to the left and to the right of each um, each horizontal asymptote. So there's a couple ones that we know, which we have negative 2, which we know is undefined, right? That's where we get our asymptote. And then we also have 3, which is also undefined. Now, as far as choosing my other values that I want to evaluate for, hold on one second. Um, I really can just pick any numbers I want to. Now, I don't want to just pick any, like, bad random numbers. I'd like to pick some numbers that are obviously going to help me out and that are going to be fairly simple. So I usually like to pick numbers that are very close to the ones I'm using. 4, 5, negative 4, negative 3. And then I like to try to use as simple as possible. For instance, 0 and 1. Now, I am going to use graphing technology because at least in my class, I expect students to be able to identify these points. But then they can always use graphing technology to figure them out. So to evaluate for these points, um, I'm not, you could plug them into each of one of these equations. Uh, for instance, 
if I wanted to evaluate this and I didn't really know, I didn't have a graph, I didn't have a calculator, then you'd have to evaluate. So you'd evaluate for negative four, which is equal to negative four minus four divided by negative four squared minus a negative four minus six, which is equal to negative eight. That becomes 16 plus four minus six, which is equal to negative eight over 14, right? And then you find that decimal approximation and then graph it. Um, and then you'd have to do that for every single one of these values. However, using a graphing calculator is very, very handy, I would say. So what I would do is I'm just, I plugged in my function already, and I'm going to erase this. Uh, no, actually, I'll be all right. Um, so now all I do is I just go ahead and write in a table, make sure I have the same setup, and I just go ahead and find each one of my values, and I'll just do it to the tenth here. So I have negative 0.57. For at negative three, I have negative 1.16. Oh, that's actually seven. And you can see at negative two, it's undefined, or it says error, right? Because that's where the asymptote is. At zero, I have 0.67. At one, I have 0.5. Um, at four, I have 0. And at 5, I have 0 0.07. Now, this is interesting because we always talk about you know, vertical asymptotes of them not crossing. But in this case, you can see that it does cross at 0, which is interesting. So um, let's go ahead and plot what we have here. So at negative 1, 2, 3, 4. And negative 4, I'm at 0 0.5, uh, negative 0 0.57, which is 1, 2, Okay, and then at negative 3, I'm at negative 1.17. All right, at negative 2 is undefined, 0 is at 0.67, and 1 is at 0 0.05. Now, you might want to know um, some other points um, to kind of help you graph this, and I can see at 2 is also at 0 0.5. All right, um, now let's go to 4, so at 4 is at 0, and 5 is at 0 0.07. Okay. Now, to kind of identify this one, you look knowing my um, relationships. Remember, when we have asymptotes, that's where the graph is going to approach, right? So this one is fairly simple. I can see, and also I, what I do is I also just look at the graph, and I can see that. Oh, okay, that's the function. This one is a little bit more difficult to see, um, and it's really kind of odd. Is exactly the way that the relationship and the shape, it looks kind of like a parabola, kind of, it's kind of like a distorted little parabola. And then this one, I keep on looking and I use some more table values to see that, yes, this graph actually does approach the asymptote. It does cross the horizontal asymptote, and then it fans out, and then again, it continues to approach the vertical asymptote. So remember when creating vertical asymptotes, that is where your graph is going to approach. It's never going to cross your vertical asymptotes. It is possible to intercept the horizontal asymptote, but it's still going to approach it at the end. Um, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a rational function, as well as determine the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Thanks.